Hi there, guys. So for exercise 12G, you will notice that there are no questions beforehand to help you with the exercise. Obviously, there's the investigation, which goes into quite a lot of depth. And that's what I've gone through last time around in the previous video. But for as soon as you get to exercise 12G, I think you're looking at it and wondering, really, do we have to do a ton of working out like in the investigation? Quite how do we deal with this? And in fact, in part, what you need to do is use the rules which are given here, but also in part, you just need to find dy dt, dy dx, um, which is what they're asking you to, to do here. And then you should be able to figure out what the sketch of the phase portrait looks like. OK, so let's take these then. So let's take uh, the first couple here. So let's maybe just do a couple of these, right? So uh, first of all, it says find the eigenvalues. Well, you know, we know how to do this now. It's going to take us quite a while to do. Um, you know, you need to set this one up as 2 and minus 5 and 1 and minus 2. And that applied to x, y is equal to some lambda uh, acting on x, y as well, which we then know is equal to x dot y dot. Anyway. In order to go ahead and then solve that, you should know by this stage that you need to put in 2 minus lambda. So take away lambda from each of the diagonals, the 5, the 1, and the minus 2 minus lambda there. And then essentially set the determinant of this equal to 0. So that's going to give us our eigenvalues. So in this case, we'll get 2 minus lambda and then minus 2 minus lambda, and then minus 1 times by minus 5 is equal to 0. OK, well, I suppose we could take out a factor of minus 1 from this, and uh, we could do that, take out a factor of minus 1 from this as well, and that's going to make everything positive. So we can say that's x, uh, sorry, lambda, take away 2, and then we'll have to take away lambda there, plus even. OK, and then we've got plus 5 on the end here as well. OK, so in multiplying this out, we're going to get lambda squared, and the two middle terms are going to disappear, and then we'll get minus 5, and then minus 4, and then plus 5 is equal to 0. OK, so now we've obviously got lambda squared is equal to, we take the minus, we take the 1 from this over to the other side, we're getting minus 1. So lambda is equal to plus or minus the square root of minus 1, which is plus or minus i, which of course is what we want because we've got systems of complex, uh, we, sorry, we've got uh, complex eigenvalues in, in these um, solutions to our couple differential equations. OK, so from that, we now need to consider this little box. And the box tells us that if a from a plus minus b i is equal to 0, then we get a circle or we get an ellipse. OK, um, so that's what we've got in the first case. So there's no spiraling which is happening. We're either going to get a circle or we're going to get an ellipse. And potentially, we're going to get an ellipse which is on its side as well. But how do we know what we've got? Well, that all comes from doing a few rough calculations from, from here. Now, we only really need some rough calculations because they only want a sketch of this situation as well. So we don't need to check tons of points, but they're asking us to check the point one zero. Now, I'm going to check a, a little bit more than that, actually, because I think I kind of want to know what's going on all the way around here. And you know, just checking one point might tell might not be able to tell me whether I've got an ellipse. So I'm going to check what's going on. So find dy dt at this point. Well, again, I'm going to do slightly more than that. I'm not only going to find dy dt, I'm going to find dx dt as well. So let's start off with dx dt and there's dy dt. Now that just comes from this. So if we put in these coordinate points, I'm going to go 1, 1, minus 1, and minus 1. So if we put in the coordinate point to start off with 1, 0, 
we'll see that the y obviously will disappear then we'll get two in this case and one in this case you're getting two and one now you can create a direction vector from that you can say that's two one that's what's happening so over time per one i don't know what t is maybe t is in seconds so of every every second we're moving at a rate of two potentially meters per second in that direction horizontally so we're going this way two but at that particular point also going up by one per second so we're going in this direction here now you can definitely find the gradient because dy dx through the through the use of the chain rule is equal to dy dt times by dt dx now dy dt here is equal to one and dt dx is equal to uh, one over dx dt times by a half here so we can see that we're getting out the gradient of a half there. Now, this also tells us the direction there. It just doesn't say that there's a gradient of a half, but this is telling us that we're going across by two and up by up by one. It's, if we had a minus and a minus there, we'd still get the gradient of a half, but we'd be traveling in this direction instead. So that's quite important in order to know whether or not we are spir spiraling one way or circling one way or the other way so here we've got this gradient of about a half a little flatter than that so we can put a little arrow on to represent that half now i'm going to do exactly the same thing for each of these to find out what those vectors are so if we choose this one here we can see that x dot is going to give us minus five minus two so that's going to be minus five there, minus two. That's the direction vector at that point. And if we use this point here, minus one, we can see that we're going to get minus two there, and we're going to get uh, minus one there. So again, the gradient of a half, but going backwards, be minus two, minus one there. So minus two, minus one, so it's this gradient here now uh, this one minus five minus two uh, what's the gradient of that going to be so that's going to be 0 0.4 no, sorry not 0 0.4 yeah 0 0.4 sorry 0 0.4 so a little bit less steep than the other one I might have to exaggerate that a little bit now we'll see from the next one where we're using minus one when we put minus one in so that's minus one here and this is zero x's are going to be zero so they're going to disappear minus one is going to give us five across and two up so that's going to be five comma two now five comma two again is going to be slightly more than four comma two so it's going to be slightly uh so five across so it's slightly less steep at two up two up so it's going to be slightly less steep than this so i'm going to exaggerate this a little bit because we're going to go kind of kind of like that and again, here, this is going to be a little bit less shallow, and I'll exaggerate it. So we can see here, we're kind of going like this and, and this, and then this and this. Okay, so in order to put this ellipse in now, it's definitely not going to go like this. If it was going to go like this, then we would have um, only a y part of the vector at this particular point. And here we'd only have a, an x part, whether it be in this direction or whether it be in this direction. But this is more complicated, but they're all, all of these ellipses are centered around zero, zero. So we can see it's going to go something like this. I'm trying to go through all of those. Oh, well, I'm struggling a little bit. But it's going to go something like that. Okay, and it's going to be centered around zero, zero. Okay, so my top tip for this is that although they're just interested in dy dt, which is the rate of the height over time, which is sufficient, by the way, by the way, to tell us that it's going to be an upwards arrow here, and that this is going to be uh, upwards here, this is going to be downwards here, and this is going to be downwards here. Uh, sorry, downwards here, and downwards here, and upwards here, and upwards here. Which means, by the way, I've got that arrow wrong in the center that that arrow should have been like this way, right? Should have been this way, so that's that's wrong. Okay, so 
Yeah, so although you could do it with dy dt and you could do it by considering the gradient, so by getting out dy dx, I personally think it's better to work out the vector which we're traveling at at that particular time. So this is like a velocity vector at that point. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. Oh, and by the way, also, instead of just doing it at one, zero, take four points around the outside. Okay, and I'll do that with the next one as well. So let's have a look at the answers to this one. So for 12G, there we go. We can see we've kind of got it right. Look at my version. Look at their version there. First one. Theirs is a bit more squashed, but it's only a sketch. We've got all of the key features right in that diagram. Obviously, it should be relatively symmetrical, this thing. It shouldn't be bigger on one side than the other side. That's my bad drawing. Okay, let's do part B. So for part B, I'm, I'm going to cheat here, okay, just save myself a little bit of time. We can see that we get the eigenvalues here as 1 plus minus 2 root 2i. So we're getting 1 plus minus 2 root 2i. So I'm skipping the working out. Obviously, don't do that, but, you know, I'm just trying to make this quick. So again, we're going to solve these. We're going to, we're going to do exactly the same. I'm setting up a matrix, taking away lambda on. The, the main diagonal, and then solving the determinant equal to zero and finding your two eigen uh, eigen values. And those eigen values you're not going to be able to find through factorization because, of course, these ones don't factorize and they don't factorize because we know that we're getting a, a plus minus bit here. Essentially, that's that's either through completing the square or through using the quadratic formula. So. Um, so that's going to be lambda 1 and lambda 2. Now, in order to draw this thing, let's just check. Let's go back and just check this little box here. Because we've got an A here, the A is telling us that if it's positive, we're going to spiral outwards from the origin. And if it's negative, it's this bit here. If it's negative, it's going to spiral in towards the origin. So in this case, we can see that A is positive, so we're going to spiral out from the origin. Okay, so now that you've got your eigenvalues, the normal thing that you're used to doing from before is to go then and find your eigenvectors and then to find your complete solution uh, to your coupled differential equations. Now, in this case, we don't need to do that. Again, we only really need to work out dy dt and the gradient or dy dt and dx dt at this particular point and then we should be able to sketch the entire phase portrait which is what we're being asked to do so again i'm going to say it was worth doing more than just one point here and also working out dx dt so again i'm going to choose the point one zero zero one and these points around here as well so again, if I wanted to work out x dot and y dot there, okay, if we want to work, x, work out x dot, we would substitute in this point here into here. See, there's no y part, so we're just getting a 2 and a 1 there. Oh, what am I doing? I'm talking about using this one here. So that's giving us minus 1 and 4. Okay, y part disappears. So the vector movement here is going to be minus 1, 4. We can get a gradient from that, no problem. If we want the gradient, that's just going to be 4 over minus 1. Okay, um, and for, for the next point here, the x disappears essentially, and you're going to end up with minus 3 and plus 3. That's minus 3 and plus 3 there. And Again, if we do it with this point, that's going to disappear. We'll get plus 1 and minus 4. So basically just the opposite of this. So that's 1 and minus 4. And then you can expect it's going to be the negative, the, the uh, reverse of this one as well for the last one. So let's just check it again. So this disappears. If we put the minus 1 in for y, we're going to get out 3 and minus 3 there. So we're getting... 3 and minus 3. So let's try and put on those gradients then. So we've got 1 backwards and 4 up. So it's going something like this at this point. We've got 3 backwards and 3 up. So 
it's going in this direction at this point. And then we've got one forwards and four down. So like the opposite of this, again, the opposite of this one here is going to be three forwards. So something like this. Okay, so that's meant to be this. I haven't drawn that particularly well. There we go. So like in the direction of M being minus one, the gradient being minus one. Okay, so sketch the phase portrait. Now, again, we need to remember, of course, that A is a factor here, so it's going to be a spiral. So if we have a look at this, we can see that if A is greater than zero, it's going to spiral away from the center. Okay, so we're going to spiral away in the center, and then we should be able to just see that we're going to be spiraling in this direction here. So we've got the direction of the spiral there as well. So it's roughly like this to draw on that phase portrait in this case. Now we can put some arrows on there too because we need to show that it's spiraling outwards. So perhaps just put a few arrows on. And let's check this one with the answers in the back. There we go. Now that looks a little bit different to mine because I've just done it in one spiral. And you can see that they've actually taken three lines, I think, from the center. So they've basically put in other ones, other lines in between. So like, you know, if you put in this one here, it would start looking a bit more like what they've got. But it's okay to do it with one line. You can put in other spiraling lines going inside those as well, if you wish to as well. Okay, well, I'll leave the other ones up to you. Um, I think they're kind of satisfying these once you get it. And to realize as well that actually they're not that difficult. Like, you know, if you do a few more points, so this point, this point, this point, and this point, there's not pages of working out that you need to do. It's just finding gradients from using these formulas here. So it's just substituting in some points into these and then fitting the pattern. If this is zero, then it's... You know, we've got circles or we've got ellipses. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Perhaps another word on ellipses, actually, because I think that could be kind of difficult. If you end up getting, say, for example, a gradient here and a gradient here, and you've checked the points here and you say, well, I've got this direction here and this direction here. Well, it's looking, you know, I've checked that point, and, and these are at the point one one minus one and minus one just on those axes and you say well maybe i've got a, a circle in fact but if you check the size of those arrows you should see if this is much larger and this is much larger then it's going faster at those points so if it's traveling faster at those points then we know that we're going to end up getting sort of ellipses like this so that one's going to be slightly more tricky to draw in fact and it might be if you're not certain about that one if you get something like that, if it's traveling faster at this point than it is at this point, then you can always check a point which is to the side. You can say, well, okay, let's just check a point which is um, up here. So then that would be, if this is an ellipse, then you'd be expecting that to be flatter at this point instead of going like this. So, you know, so if you're unsure at any point what it looks like, you can always take another coordinate point to check. If you're unsure, for example, if it's an ellipse this way or if it's an ellipse this way, again, take another point and then you can check. Ellipses this way, you'll end up getting this point going like in this direction here. Ellipses this way and you'll get this direction going much flatter. Okay, so thanks for listening in and good luck with the exercise and hopefully see you back for the next one.